The most valuable skill for landing a six-figure data analyst job isn't what everyone thinks it is. And I know you don't want to hear this, but mastering SQL alone won't get you there. The truth is, while everyone's obsessing over complex queries and window functions, the people actually getting hired and paid what they're worth are focusing on something completely different. And these high-paying data roles are desperate to fill positions, but most aspiring data analysts are completely missing what employers actually want. So let me show you three critical skills beyond Beyond SQL, there are landing my students high paying job offers even when they come from non-technical backgrounds like teaching, truck driving, or retail. And the best part, most aspiring analysts are completely ignoring these skills entirely, which means there's a massive opportunity for you if you're willing to do the work that others won't. So let's dive in before someone else takes the job that you deserve. But first, if this is your first time here, I'm Kadisha Bryan. Five years ago, I was working warehouse shifts and delivering pizzas, making $8 an hour, and today, I I lead a community of over 60,000 aspiring and current data professionals, and I've helped thousands of other career changers break into data analytics without going back to school and wasting money on courses that just don't work. And if you ever want to work with me one-on-one -on -one to land your first data role in the next three to six months, there's a link in the description and we can start working together. So let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, SQL is essential, but if you can't write a decent join or use a window function, you're not going to get past the technical screening. But here's what no one tells you. SQL is just the price of entry. It's not what gets you the offer. I learned this the hard way. While I was transitioning from delivering pizzas to data analytics, I spent months trying to perfect my SQL skills. I could write all the complex queries, optimize performance, handle subqueries, you name it. But I was still getting rejected for job offers. It wasn't until I shifted my focus when things changed. And within 30 days of changing my strategy, I landed multiple offers and eventually landed my role. And since then, I've helped thousands of other career changers do the exact same thing. So what are these three critical skills beyond SQL? that actually gets you hired. Let me break them down. Skill number one, data storytelling. This is where 90% of aspiring data analysts completely drop the ball. They can write perfect queries, but have no idea how to translate those results into business value. And here's what happens in the real world. You run a query, you get your results, and then what? A table with numbers isn't going to impress anyone. What matters is your ability to look at those results and say, here's what this means to our business. Here's why it matters. And here's what we should do about it. Let me give you a concrete example of what bad versus good data storytelling looks like. Bad data storytelling is a bunch of charts with no context, lack of clarity, and a bunch of clutter. That's what most people do, and that's why they don't get hired. Good data storytelling is the exact opposite. Great context with the numbers, no clutter, and intentional design. So how do you develop this skill? Start by asking these three questions with every analysis. What's the business problem that I'm solving? What's the key insight from this data? And what actions should someone take based on this insight? If you can't answer these questions, you're not ready to present your findings. But let's go even deeper. Great data storytelling follows a specific structure. First, you start with the context. What's the business situation and why does it matter? Second, you present the key finding, not all the data in a spreadsheet, just the most important insight. And third, you support your findings with relevant data. Now is when you show your charts and numbers. And fourth, you explain your implications. What does this mean for the business? And finally, you recommend actions. What should be done based on your analysis? This structure works whether you're creating a dashboard, a slide deck, or just having a conversation with a stakeholder. And it's what separates analysts who get promoted from those who stay stuck. Skill number two, consulting style communication. This is what separates the 50K analyst from the 100K plus analyst. Most people think data analysis begins in isolation, just you and your computer crunching numbers. But in reality, the highest paid analysts are spending maybe half their time communicating with stakeholders, understanding the business needs and presenting their findings. You need to be able to speak the language of the business, not just the language of the data. This means creating professional slide decks, leading meetings and translating technical concepts for your non-technical audiences. One of my students landed a data analyst role in about 90 days with about a 95K salary. The game changer, he learned how to create consulting style slide decks that follow the pyramid principle, leading with the answer then supporting it with data, not the other way around. His presentations weren't just data dumps. 
They are strategic narratives that guide decisions. And that's what companies are paying six figures for. So let me break down exactly what consulting style communication looks like in practice. First, it's about asking the right question before you even touch the data. Most analysts jump straight into writing queries without fully understanding the business problem. But top tier analysts start by asking questions such as, what decision are we trying to make? Who's the audience for this analysis? What actions could result from this work? What's the business impact of getting this right or wrong? These questions ensure you're solving the right problem from the start. Second, it's about structuring your communication in a way that respects people's time and attention. This means leading with the answer. Don't make stakeholders wait until slide 20 to hear your conclusion. Using a clear hierarchy of information main point, supporting points, and then details. One message per slide or visualization. Don't cram multiple insights in one place. Using business language, not technical jargon. Talk about impact, not implementation. The way you communicate with the engineering team should be different from how you communicate with executives. For technical audiences, you can go deeper into the methodology and implementation details. But for business audiences, focus on the insights, the implications, and the recommendations. This adaptability is crucial for career advancement. The higher that you go, the more you'll interact with senior stakeholders who don't care about your SQL prowess. They care about your business value that you deliver. Skill number three, end-to-end project execution. This is the ultimate differentiator in today's job market. Companies don't just want specialists who could only do one thing really well. They want analysts who could handle the entire data lifecycle, from defining the problem to collecting the data, cleaning it, visualizing it, and communicating recommendations. This is why the marketing analytics consulting internship that I provide to my students is so powerful. It gives them real-world experience handling messy data and delivering actual business value from end to end. Let me walk you through exactly what end to end project execution looks like. Phase one, problem definition. Identify a clear business problem or opportunity. Then define business objectives for your analysis. Then establish key success metrics. How will you know if your solution works? Phase two, data collection and preparation. Identify relevant data sources, extract and combine data from multiple sources, clean and transform messy data, and then document your cleaning process that shows attention to detail. Phase three, analysis and insight generation. Explore the data and identify patterns and anomalies. Apply appropriate analytical techniques, generate insights that directly address the business problem, and then validate your findings with statistical tests or business logic. Phase four, visualization and communication. Write clear, focused visualizations that highlight key insights. Build interactive dashboards that answer business questions and develop a compelling narrative around your findings. Then create a consulting style presentation or report. Phase five, recommendations and implementation. Propose specific actionable recommendations. Quantify the potential impact of your recommendations and then outline implementation steps or considerations and then address potential challenges or limitations of your work. Most aspiring analysts only focus on phases two and three, just the technical parts. But phases one, four, and five is where the real value is created. They're what turn data into decisions. Another one of my students transitioned from teaching to a data analyst. And for her portfolio project, she analyzed a school district budget data to identify opportunities for resource optimization. She didn't just run SQL queries and create charts. She interviewed and administrators to understand their pain points, clean years of messy budget data, and built a dashboard that highlighted spending patterns. And she delivered a presentation with specific recommendation that could save her district so much money annually. This comprehensive approach demonstrated that she could handle the entire analytical process and not just the technical parts. And that's what got her hired, despite not having any traditional analyst experience. So here's the bottom line. SQL is necessary, but not sufficient on its own. And if you want to land a six-figure role in data, you need to master data storytelling, consulting style presentations, and end-to-end project execution. Now, I know what you're thinking. This all sounds great, but how do I exactly develop these skills? That's exactly what I'm going to show you next. 
The first step is to stop thinking like a student and start thinking like a consultant. Most people approach SQL by following tutorials and completing exercises. That's fine for the basics, but that's not going to get you hired. Instead, identify a real business problem that you want to solve. It could be analyzing customer churn for e-commerce business, optimizing inventory for a retail store, or improving donor retention for a nonprofit. Then find real-world data related to that problem. Clean it, analyze it, and most importantly, extract insights that drive decisions create a dashboard that tells a story not just displays data and finally build a consulting style presentation that guides stakeholders to the right conclusion this approach doesn't just teach you sql it teaches you how to be an analyst who delivers true value and that's what companies are paying six figures for let me give you another concrete example one of my students came from clinical research with no technical background and instead of just learning sql in isolation she applied it to a real health care problem, analyzing patient readmission rates. She cleaned messy hospital data, built a dashboard highlighting key risk factors, and created a presentation recommending specific interventions. That project not only taught her SQL in a practical context, but also gave her something to showcase in interviews. And the result is she landed a data analyst role with a 20K pay raise in her first position. But let's get even more practical. Here are specific exercises that you can start doing today to develop these critical skills. For data storytelling, take a public data set and identify three key insights. For each insight, write a headline that captures a business implication. They create one visualization that clearly communicates that insight. Write a brief narrative explaining why this matters and what action should be taken. For consulting style communication, record yourself explaining a data concept and watch it back. Practice the pyramid principle. Start with your conclusion and then support it. Create a one-page executive summary of a complex analysis and you can join your local Toastmasters or take an improv class to further improve your verbal communication. For end-to-end -end project execution, volunteer your analytical skills for a local nonprofit or small business in your area. Take their messy data and the real world problems with unclear requirements. Document your entire process from problem definition to recommendations and then create a portfolio case study that showcases your approach and not just your results. These exercises won't make you necessarily any better at SQL, but they will make you better at delivering real value through data. And that's what gets you hired and paid what you're worth. Now, if you're serious about breaking into data analytics and landing a six-figure role eventually, I have created a free training that dives deeper into these three skills and shows you exactly how to develop them. Click the link in the description to access it. You'll learn the exact roadmap my students use to go from complete beginners to high-paid analysts in six months or less without going back to school and wasting money on courses that just don't work. In the training, I'll show you the four-phase method for breaking into data analytics without getting another degree, how to build a portfolio that gets you interviews without formal experience, the exact skills to learn in what order and into what depth, how to position yourself as a mid-level and up analyst, not entry level, and then real examples of career changers I work with who's used this exact method to land high-paying roles in data analytics. I've helped truck drivers, teachers, retail workers, and people from dozens of other backgrounds break into data analytics and secure roles at companies like Microsoft, Roku, and more. And I can help you do the exact same if you're willing to focus on what actually matters and not just what's easy or comfortable. Remember, SQL is just the beginning. Master these three critical skills and you'll not only get hired, but you're going to get paid what you're worth. Now, if you found this valuable, check out my video over here where I break down the exact step-by-step -step portfolio that's landing my students high paying jobs in data. It's the perfect next steps to put these communication skills into practice with a real world project. I'll see you in the next video.